Hello everyone! In today's tutorial, we'll share a few tips and tricks for optimizing your 3D models, something that may be necessary in certain projects where the complexity of the scene can make the final visualization less smooth or feel quite slow or choppy. This can occur because the resources needed to display the scene may be too much for the device attempting to run it. This is of a challenge always present when rendering 3D models in real time such as in video games, which have historically had to strike a balance between visual quality and resource optimization. Well, Virtual Tour Pro faces the same challenge when it generates a virtual tour with a 3D model, so we are going to give you some tips on how to support and improve it. Firstly, one of the most significant and impactful factors is to reduce the geometry of our 3D model as much as possible. In other words, limit the number of polygons, edges, and vertices that make up the object. This is something that you'll need to do in another program independent from VT Pro. In our case, we'll use Blender because it's a good and free option that everyone can use. There are many methods available to achieve such a reduction. You can find specific tutorials on this. And depending on the 3D program you're using, the type of model, or the amount of time you want to spend on this task, you'll have numerous options. We are going to focus on what seems to us the easiest and provides good results without too much complication, and that is done through the decimate modifier. Perhaps the 3D experts among you all may prefer more professional methods with a higher level of control, and we would be delighted if you could share them with the rest of the users in the comments. But for a beginner user, or even someone who has never used Blender, we believe this is the best option. The complete process would be as follows. We open Blender, click here on New File, General. We remove these first objects that always appear by default. And here in File, Import, we choose the type of model format we want to import. In our case, a GLB. We search for our file and select it. We wait for it to open. This can take a few seconds or even minutes, depending on the file. And there we have it. With these modes, we can visualize the model with or without texture. And above all, with this, see it in wireframe mode, which will be very useful to see the geometry density of each object. By deactivating this X-ray option, this may appear more clearly to us actually, because we don't see its internal mesh and what we can already appreciate is how certain objects have a high geometry density, which we are going to be able to greatly reduce their number of faces without noticeable loss of quality. So the process would be as follows. We select one of these objects, we go to the modifier section, we add a new modifier and select decimate. Now we have a series of options, and one of the most useful is being able to see here the counter of the number of faces. As you can see, in this case, we have over a million faces for this object. Well, the idea is to find a value here as low as possible to reduce the number of faces while still maintaining the shapes of the object. So for example, we can set a value of 0 0.5 and hit enter. We wait a few seconds and you see that the geometry has already been reduced. If you can't zoom in very much, we can hit the dot key on our numeric keyboard. This will center the object on the screen, and now we can zoom in more. Let's try another lower value now, and so we can keep reducing the polygons, always trying to adapt to the initial shapes. See, the number of faces is getting smaller, and we have gone in this case from a million to only 200,000. This is a very significant reduction, and apparently the object, if we look at it with its texture, still looks good. Viewing it like this, we can return to the initial value. That would be one. We apply, and we see that the change has barely been noticeable. If we set a very low value, you can see that now there has been a more exaggerated change. We observe that some elements have slightly modified their shape, but even so, we could keep this value. If we continue reducing, however, you see that we do reach a point where we lose too much level of detail of the object. At this point, the geometry can start to break and generate gaps between the meshes. This is a limit that you should not reach. But for example, a value like this would be acceptable. You simply have to find that balance between loss of details and reduction of the number of faces. 
Let's go now, for example, to this other object. This sofa that we observe is divided into several parts. We could either select each object and do that same process, or it might be faster to press the Shift key and select several objects at once. We create a group with all of them by pressing the Control plus J keys, and this way we only have to do this process once for the whole group. Let's try a value of 0 0.2 and see what outcome we get. And although there have been slight changes, the object still looks good. Let's try and reduce it a little more. But now, as you can see, we have some odd elements that are starting to appear. So it might be best to stick with the previous value. And even so, we have also significantly reduced the number of faces. All right, so the process would be as simple as looking for elements in our scene with a high number of faces and trying to reduce them. As long as we have the modifier, we can return to the original model geometry because it's non-destructive. However, before exporting our modified model to open in VT Pro, we would need to apply this modifier to the objects. This means the geometry will become permanent and we won't be able to recover the original. So, once you have all the objects with the modifier, you could save this Blender file to keep a copy with the original geometry, and then finally apply the modifier. And that you do with this arrow and clicking on Apply. This process may take a few seconds. We wait until the modifier has disappeared. And thus the object is left with the applied reduced geometry. We would do the same for this object. We go to the modifier, apply it, and now we would have our model with reduced geometry. Now it's time to go to File, Export. We select GLTF, we name our file and click on Export. We wait, and finally we would have our optimized geometry model. Here you can compare the original model file which is over a gigabyte against this one, exported after the optimization process on many other objects, although done quickly to keep this tutorial short and which could be reduced a lot more. But with this process, we have already nearly halved the final size. Now on the other hand, depending on its origin, your model may contain textures with excessively large images in terms of size or weight in megabytes, which in turn can greatly increase the size of the final file. Although VT Pro offers some automatic options to reduce quality and sizes, it might be beneficial for us to do this manually too. To do this, we go to export the model again. We look for the GLTF format. And here we switch, instead of GELB format, to this one, GLTF plus texture. This will make the textures export separately as opposed to the GLB where they are inserted within the file itself and you don't have access to them. With this method, you will be able to see and edit those texture files. We put it in a folder and export. We check and here we have our folder with the GLTF file and all the texture files that are being used in our model. If we sort by size, we can see that there are texture files of over 22 megabytes that we could reduce, either by passing this PNG file through an online compression tool or with image editing software. And most importantly, check its size, which is 4096 by 4096 pixels, which is the maximum size we recommend for texture files. But there might be materials that maybe will be seen from afar and do not need such a high level of resolution. So we could also reduce its scale by half to 2048 by 2048 using Photoshop or similar, which even with macro options, you could automate this task for all images. Now in VT Pro, if we use this GLTF file, it will take these modified textures, which will greatly reduce the total weight of the project. Or if you prefer, you can stay in the GLB format where with a single file you have all the textures inside. You could create a new project, import the GLTF file with its modified textures, and re-export in GLB format. That really depends on how you feel more comfortable, whether with the GLB format or GLTF with the separate textures. And now, after all this process, let's compare. 
We can see here how an unoptimized model might look, where the movements are a little jumpy. And then on the other hand, we have this other model that is optimized and where movement is clearly much more smooth and fluid. All right, let's now take a look at all the options and adjustments you have within 3 DaVista VT Pro, which to a greater or lesser extent will influence the performance of the tour. As you can see, this is an advanced version of the previous model, in which we have implemented improvements and added lights and textures, among other things. However, the purpose of this tutorial is only to explain those sections of the program that will directly affect performance. Going in order, we will first explain the Settings tab. Here we will find one of the most important options called Optimize Model. We recommend always keeping this option checked, as it helps to reduce the file size to speed up its download in addition to increasing rendering speed. Here we also have the option to compress the textures, which as I said, you could do manually with external software, defining specific values for each of them, or here to do it globally and automatically. And with this slider, you can increase or decrease the quality of those files to make them lighter. At the bottom, you also have a sub-option to reduce the size of the textures exclusively for display on mobile, so that through this selector, we can choose the maximum size of those textures. And this is very interesting to be able to leave a larger size version for when the tour is viewed on desktop, where when using larger monitors, we are going to be able to see more detail, while we reduce the other one because on mobile, we probably don't need such a large level of detail and are fine with viewing everything much smaller. This way, we can ensure that on those devices with less resource capacity, performance is not greatly affected. We can skip the camera, hotspots, and panoramas tabs, as there is no option especially relevant to optimization. So, we are going to move on to the environment tab and switch models for a better explanation. All right, well, Background images can also affect performance. Both regular images like this one, or panoramas like this one, especially in the initial loading. That is why we recommend using images as small and compressed as possible for this. Regular images shouldn't exceed 2048 pixels in width. Panoramas shouldn't exceed 3200 pixels. In fact, the program will actually limit this size and will not display higher resolutions. But above all, this is particularly significant if you're using these panoramas as reflection maps. Like in this case, you can see that even here in the viewer, it takes a moment to load and display for the first time. Therefore, we suggest, particularly for this purpose, to significantly reduce the size. After all, they will be reflections, so they don't need to be seen with clarity. Let's move to the next tab, and here we have another crucial part, it's about the lighting. As a general recommendation, we can tell you that the fewer lights you use, the better. This is because the program will have to perform calculations with each of them, meaning that the more we add, the more processes we add, which will also affect the performance. So ideally, we would use a soft ambient light to illuminate the scene a little bit in general. Something like this. or even replace that light with a reflection map which will provide overall lighting to our object. Let's go back. And now we can add our main light. Position it in a spot where the model is visible from all angles. Something like this. In this way, with a very basic scheme, we can have our scene well lit using just one light. The second recommendation regarding lights would be to disable this Cast Shadows checkbox. This is another feature that, if enabled, will also add to the processing calculations. So even though this lends a lot of realism to the scene, you should only use it when necessary. In the case of enabling it, another related option would be this one of Enable Shadow in 3D Model. What it does is that the cast shadows are not only applied on the platform or ground, although in our case we have a baked shadow, but instead all elements of the object project and receive this shadow, which, as you can imagine, also increases the calculations even more. Then, regarding the specific settings of this shadow casting, what you can do to minimize this load a bit would be to reduce as much as possible this map size value. Then the interesting thing would be to try to find a combination of settings, in which with this value at the minimum you achieve a satisfactory result.
lastly, we want to mention that you have a third option for all this, and that would be to generate this kind of projected shadows in the 3D program you're using. This way, you could bake the scene, which is a process by which all these shadows would be applied to the model's materials, so you wouldn't need to enable this checkbox here in VT Pro. Instead, the shadows would already be integrated into the model's texture, thus freeing up the processor from having to do these calculations. This would work as long as we use static shadows. If our model contains animations and we want these cast shadows to be animated, it would have to be done using this option. We also have an article in our FAQs where we explain how to combine both techniques. In the next tab, we have the animations. As you can imagine, they can also slow down the tour, especially if you have many operating at the same time, so that is something to keep in mind. And to finish this part, other things that could have an impact are adding effects, like for example the vignetting effect, the ambient occlusion effect, or the motion blur effect. They are all visually appealing effects, but if activated, we will increase the complexity level in rendering a bit more. And finally, as our last recommendation, we want to tell you that you always have the option to ensure that your tour looks good on mobile devices, which are usually the ones presenting more challenges. You can prepare your project in a way that you have one model to be viewed on desktop devices and a different one for mobile devices. As you can see in this example, the desktop model has over 2 million polygons, while in the mobile version we have made a much more drastic reduction, leaving it at 700,000, almost a third. Moreover, in this version we can also significantly limit everything we have seen, like reducing lights, environment image size, etc. So with a little trick in the skin, we can make it so that depending on the device, one model or the other opens. Let's see how. The method is very simple. You have to have two distinct skins one for desktop and one for mobile, and simply in the desktop one, we would create a container, which we already have here, and that we can put in any corner at 0% size so that it doesn't bother, it doesn't even show, and to which we are going to add the action of open 3D model. The important thing here is that you have selected on initialization. And here as a 3D model, we choose desktop. Now we go to the mobile skin. We create the same container. And so you can see it well, we add the action 3D model. Open 3D model. We select mobile in this case, and we change the trigger and put it on initialization. And that's it. It's as easy as this. Now, depending on the device, one skin or the other will automatically open, and each one will trigger the action of opening the model we want. With this, we conclude our tutorial. We hope that you have a better idea of how to improve the performance of your tours that include 3D models. It's important that you pay attention to this aspect and test the tour on different devices before launching it to avoid spoiling the experience and thus undermining all the work and effort you have put into creating it. If you take into account the tips and tricks we have explained, you will surely avoid this and achieve much more satisfying results. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.